This is a review of the Thermaltake CT120 ARGB 120mm cooling fans. And I recently bought these with my own money for some Nash projects I'm working on. Um, I went with these because they were affordable. And uh, supposedly anything over 2mm H2O is uh, good for high static pressure. I won't be using these for radiators, but I will be using these in rack mount cases that need to be able to push the air past drives and stuff. So, open these boxes up real quick here and take a look at what's inside. I wanted the non-RGB version of these fans because it was $3 cheaper, but it was going to be like a week or two to, before I would get them. So I just went, went and got them locally. Um, so yeah, otherwise I think these were $24.99 a pair versus $21.99 a pair for just the regular CT120s. But I guess a little RGB won't hurt. <laughs> They're very heavy fans is one thing I was surprised about because most of the fans I've bought or had um, don't feel anywhere near as heavy as these do. They have a fairly beefy plastic frame. They went with a different design than what I'm used to, because usually these corners, there's a gap between the plastic, and then this is basically a whole wing, and the support of the fan is the circular part. So that's where a lot of that weight's coming from. And I feel like they spin fairly smooth. Usually, I'm no expert, of bearings by any means, but usually you can tell if a bearing's decent or not by how smoothly it stops. Um, I believe some of the motor has some influence though too on how it stops. I think I think it's the magnetic field that the the permanent magnets that are in it that you can have it do that rocking motion. Something I'm seeing about this I don't really care for is, I knew they'd be R RGB, but they have these RGB connections and fan connections, and these are made so you can daisy chain them. So they have these odd shorter cables. I don't really like this. I'd rather just have a um, connection, and then if I want to daisy chain them, splitter, use a splitter, but um, I guess that's kind of depends on what you're using them for. It does have two different notch points for running the cables. So if you want to run the cables out this side instead of the side that they come out of the factory. Um, so to get it out, you just kind of rotate it out. So you'll see, kind of twist it at a 45 degree angle and then kind of rotate as you lift it up. And then put it in, figure out a position here that it wants to be in. You kind of drop it down vertically, and you just kind of rotate and push down. This isn't such a natural position though, because of the uh, the angle of the wire and everything. But if you want to have the cables coming up top instead of this, well, I guess I don't know really what the top is. I would consider the top, considering the orientation of the logo. Um, but if you want to come out top the side, you can't adjust that. Which is like, like you can do that with most fans, from what I've seen, but um, that's a decent feature to have. Cable management's going to kind of suck for these, because like if you don't want the RGB, where do you put the RGB cable? And then you're going to have this extra connector, rather than just running a single wire to the motherboard. So there's two fans per box, and it comes with an accessory kit. Let's see what's in the accessory kit. Whole bunch of stuff. So you get two extension. Oh, what is that? Hmm. How does that work? I guess I don't know which end plugs in. Oh, actually, no. This is the the female end plugs in the motherboard. I'm already seeing pictures now online. Um. Hmm. So I guess it comes with a splitter. It's weird. Why would it come with two splitters? 
Isn't that the point of the splitter on the fan? That's a weird design. It's so long, it's not even in frame anymore. It's almost looks like two foot long. Um, so you got a splitter that has a male and female on one end and a male on the other. I'm not sure what the intent of that is. Seems kind of weird. We get two of those. Just going to fold this up real quick here. And then you also get two fan extensions, which are probably going to be splitters as well. There we are. It does come with a manual, but nobody reads the manual. <laughs> yeah, same deal. Male, female on one end, and then uh, male on the other end. Probably won't. Well, actually, no, probably will need these because these have sh such short leads. Um, because the leads that are built into these are not going to be able to reach anything. So that's kind of annoying. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't like that. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the, the wires on these fans. Because if you're going to use them like on a, an AIO radiator, and you have three in a row, that's kind of, yeah, that makes sense. But I'm going to use this one of these in the back and one of these in the side of my Sliger case that I got for review. And then I have a Rosewell case I'm building for the home NAS, in theory. And I'm going to have one of these in each drive cage. Well, in each drive cage, these aren't going to reach. And I can't uh, daisy chain them because then I'm going to have to disconnect them or remove both drive cages at the same time for service. So yeah, I'm going to need both those extensions and I'm just going to have this ugly cable mess. Plus now I'm kind of wondering too, like if you were to put this on a radiator and you want to daisy chain, where do you put the wires? Because you're going to have to point them out one direction or the other. I'm going to grab some regular fans. So I'm used to the old school fan design where the center shroud is the support and then you got wings coming off the side for mounting hardware compared to this design and normally with something like this if I'm running cables I can run them alongside and down the edge and kind of hide them versus this I don't know how the people who care about cable clutter <laughs> I guess you just attach the radiator and you send out the back of the case it's just I don't know now you got all these stupid connectors and stuff that are just gonna get in the way and you need extensions and splitters and it's like I'd rather just have this isn't even a good example. I'd rather just have a nice long long lead coming off of my fan personally. Also those fans were all dusty, so now these fans are officially dusty. They haven't even been used yet. <laughs> but looks like you get a variety of screws. You get some uh long screws with machine threads and your normal coarse thread fan screws. I don't know if, if there's like a universal standard for radiators or not when it comes to these fans. And then there's these uh, locking clips for the RGB which have the uh, thermal take logo on them which is kind of clever. I don't know if the lighting will show that. There we go. So that's kind of a cool little design there. The, the thermal take logo part. And it is nice of them to include locking clips. Um, so these can't pull apart. Let's see here. I'm just going to use it on these two fans. So, yeah, that's just weird. Okay, and I've never done anything with RGB stuff before, really. So, everyone that's that has experience is probably gonna laugh like yeah that's just how it is but I don't know so you add this little locking clip so the RGB can't unplug itself that's nice it's probably the nicest thing about these fans so far dusty um but like yeah just look at all these stupid cables and connectors coming off like why does it need to be so annoying 
I don't, I don't get it. And now, I guess I plug these into each other. Okay. But, like, this is just, this is horrible. And granted, I mean, you're kind of stuck with the RGB, so, like, you can't really do anything about that. And same, same with the fans, like, you need leads, but, like, how do you, what do you do with this? Like, you just, I mean, it looks like, looks like crap to me. I don't, I don't like that. So, yeah, I'm not a fan of the uh, wires, that's for sure. Um, it's very unimpressive. Let's see if we can get this off so I can unplug. Oh no. RGB header. I'm gonna break a pin. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I'm not even gonna hook those up. I don't even know if they're necessary for the RGB to function or not. Alright, so let's see here. I got a power supply off the side with um jumper, so it'll turn on for me. We'll plug in a fan first. There we go. So we'll see what this looks like. Oh, that's funny. So RGB doesn't even work if it's not hooked up. And then I'll hold the fan up towards... I don't know where the microphone is. <laughs> camera. Alright. They're definitely not quiet. Uh, I think this is running at the full 2000 RPM. It's not bad though. I mean, the hard drives and the NAS are going to make more noise than this. I am a little disappointed the RGB doesn't work without uh, it being hooked up, although I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. It's kind of lame though, because if you have a computer that doesn't have an RGB header, what are you going to do? <laughs> and I think the motherboard I bought for the Sliger case that I'm reviewing has an RGB header, but I mean, I don't know if I want to bother with running the wires or not. So I got two of them here now. Yeah, they're definitely not quiet at full speed. Honestly, though, I, I want as much airflow as I can. Doesn't feel like they're moving a lot, but I think with high static pressure fans, it's more about how much resistance they can work against versus the air volume they can move. But I mean, they are blowing. Um, <laughs> I can't hold that loose enough here. You can see that the papers uh, go in the other direction. But, um, I mean, the daisy chaining, that's kind of a cool party trick. Because if I wanted to have all four of these running off one power connector. Open up this other box here real quick. So, yeah, if I want to have four of these, I can just, uh, have them chase each other down the line. <laughs> and now I have four fans hooked up off one lead. But uh fold in half. But yeah, I mean just just look at all these messy cables and stuff everywhere. Like I'm not super huge on cable management. I've got a cable going through a fan. But like this is actually to the point where I'm starting to get annoyed too. So if I get annoyed about cable management, I hate to imagine what people actually care about the cable management these are gonna feel like. But uh I don't know. I, I mean for the price probably can't complain. They're after tax um it's like twelve twelve sixty twelve dollars and sixty cents each so and I, I feel like they are probably of reasonable quality it, I don't think they're junk by any means I just uh honestly I think this is the biggest thing I hate about them 
and the fact that I need an RGB controller if I want them to light up. I'm kind of bummed I didn't get to see if they look like lit up. I'm assuming though that I mean the photo is fairly representative. And the A probably stands for addressable, so you can probably do all sorts of fun color stuff with this. Uh, here's the back of the box. But I don't know how. <laughs> I mean, it definitely decreases motherboard pin requirements. I just, I don't see how you're re reducing, or not, I guess, provide, how you're providing superior cable management. Interesting. But, yeah, I, know. I mean, I don't regret buying them. I just wish they were a little bit nicer than they are from a cable standpoint. I mean, if I really cared, I guess I could just cut off the RGB cable and throw it away and <laughs> maybe put a different cable on the, the fan, splice some stuff together, but it's not worth the effort. So... Either way, hopefully that was interesting, and thanks for watching.